Morality tends to get lost very quickly when you start working at the SCP Foundation. During the whirlwind of basic training, site orientation, and learning the difference between Euclid, Keter, and Thaumiel object classes, you'll have to make peace with the fact that, as a new member of Foundation staff, you'll probably end up having to turn a blind eye to doing some morally compromising things. Then again, it's such a normal, everyday occurrence at the Foundation that almost everyone working for them is desensitized to whatever ethically dubious or downright violent tasks they have to partake in. And at the end of the day, everyone knows that it's all for the greater good, to keep anomalies securely in containment for the benefit and protection of humanity. But the one part of Foundation life that Simon Bennett just couldn't reason with was the very existence of D-Class personnel. Now, anyone with previous knowledge of the SCP Foundation's dubious practices will, of course, be aware of D-Class. But to Simon, who had just been recruited as a member of Site Security personnel, the whole concept was not only alien, but completely abhorrent. D-Class personnel, as he'd come to learn, were completely expendable. Their ranks were filled with convicted felons, almost all of them guilty of violent crimes. The Foundation seemed to have a habit of plucking inmates from the highest security prisons and penitentiaries in the world, covering their tracks by staging the deaths of these unwilling recruits into D-Class. From there, these criminals were essentially used as little more than human lab rats. And it was this part that really didn't sit well with Simon. The very idea left him torn. On the one hand, D-Class were arguably the worst of the worst. Most, if not all of them, were guilty of horrific and brutal crimes, some that could never be forgiven by anyone. But on the other, Simon struggled to rationalize taking these prisoners from their incarceration, only to subject them to anomalous creatures and entities. Most SCPs could do things to a D-Class that were almost as bad as what these convicts had done to their victims and some could dole out far, far worse fates. Did their actions make their cruel fates justifiable? Did D-Class personnel deserve the amount of punishment for their crimes? Simon didn't know. It was a perplexing moral conundrum. Most days at the Foundation, those questions echoed around his head. He was probably better suited to a role in the Ethics Committee than rank-and-file security. He was uncertain if it was better to leave a violent murderer to serve their sentence in prison until their eventual execution or abduct them and use them as a D-Class guinea pig. It wasn't long before his fellow security officers tried to dissuade Simon from questioning the Foundation's methods, reminding him how lucky he was to be selected to join them, and how an easy application of amnestics could take that all away, leaving him not only jobless, but his memory wiped as well. Ultimately, as weeks turned into months, then became years in the blink of an eye, security officer Bennett's moral compass was ground down. He started getting used to the idea of the Foundation's way of doing things, asking fewer and fewer questions to oppose how morally and ethically ambiguous a lot of their experiments and procedures were. Obedience to others slowly became apathy, and the Simon that had once been concerned with the ethics of D-Class experimentation soon began looking at them as expendable assets, just like the rest of the SCP Foundation did. He even started to resent a few of them that seemed to have gotten off easy, on a few occasions, a member of D-Class personnel got to interact with the friendly kind of anomaly. It didn't seem fair, Simon thought, that while he and the other security personnel had to put their lives on the line whenever a dangerous SCP breached containment, meanwhile a D-Class, who might have been a multiple murderer or domestic terrorist, got to sit in a testing chamber with a friendly entity, like SCP-999, the Tickle Monster. Keeping up to date with the special containment procedures for the various anomalous objects and beings held at the Foundation was an essential part of a security officer's job. Ongoing testing and new discoveries that were about an entity often led to them needing new, updated measures to keep them securely contained. But it was during a routine check of these procedures that Simon came across something strange. Well, maybe not so strange when you work at the SCP Foundation, but definitely a noticeable level of strangeness. Reading through the containment procedures for one of the anomalies housed at the site, Simon found a list of instructions, fairly standard stuff for the Foundation. The strange part was that he was sure that he had never read this list before, but at the same time, it wasn't a new update recently added to an entry in the SCP archive. It was paradoxically brand new information, a detailed description of containment measures, yet also seemingly something that had been written and archived ages ago. Reading through the instructions, they described a process that was essential to keeping one of the site's anomalies secure. 
It had even been given its own name, the special containment procedures referring to the whole practice as a monthly termination. The more that Simon read, his eyes would widen further as he learned exactly what the steps of this process entailed. In his earlier days, he wouldn't have thought of this so-called monthly termination as excessive, a needlessly cruel act even by the standards of the SCP Foundation. But that was the old Simon, a man who hadn't yet become jaded by his work, before he had come to adopt the same apathy and disregard for life as his fellow Foundation personnel. Reaching the end of the passage, describing monthly termination, Simon alerted the other security officers, making sure they read the procedure too. Some unknown feelings stirred deep within Simon, telling him this needed to be carried out, and it had to happen right now. Before long, members of staff had been told to read the entry on monthly termination, each one passing it on to their colleagues. Then, Simon and a large detachment of other guards began marching towards the cell blocks where D-Class personnel were imprisoned. Almost a third of the site's incarcerated inmates were rounded up. It couldn't have been any more than a few hundred. Simon wasn't sure. He couldn't see all of them from where he was standing, but mostly, he didn't care. All he could focus on was following the monthly termination procedure to the letter. Together, he and the security detachment escorted the collected D-Class personnel through the facility single file, all marching in efficient and perfectly synchronized motion. It was almost like a choreographed military display. If he hadn't been so preoccupied with thinking only of the procedure, Simon might have realized how strange all this was. All the personnel were moving at once in such flawless timing, even though this hadn't been planned in advance. And yet he and the other personnel had only just learned about monthly termination, and yet they were carrying it out as if they had done it a thousand times before. The security officers continued ferrying the D-classes through the facility, eventually leading the convicted felons to the main entrance. The doors were opened without question. Nobody who had read the monthly termination instructions saw what was going on as anything out of the ordinary. A long, winding row of inmates in Foundation-issue orange jumpsuits were then guided out of the site's main doors, instructed by the security to keep walking even further. None of them knew how far they'd really walked. A lot of D-Class personnel complained and moaned, but the few that tried to leave the single-file line were quickly put back in place by the security department. Most of them were directly verbally aggressive, cursing and threatening the security officers, but they seemed compliant, walking the way they were told to. It was as if they had to obey, almost like their legs wouldn't let them resist. One begged to be let go, turning to Simon and pleading not to be taken wherever it was they were going. I'm sorry, Simon replied plainly, with barely any emotion behind his words. It was a lie. He didn't feel sorry. In fact, he hadn't even been sure why he apologized at all. The reply had happened almost unnaturally, like something else was speaking through him. He wasn't even sure how far away they'd gotten from the facility. It might have felt like miles if he hadn't been thinking about it, but he wasn't. None of the officers were. They were following their instructions, totally unaware that they'd been walking for so long that they were starting to get blisters. They all somehow knew they had gotten far enough, beyond the reach and sight of the Foundation facility they started in, so far in fact that the surveillance systems wouldn't be able to see them. Still moving with the same complete synchronous timing, Simon and the other security officers herded the D-Class personnel towards a wooded clearing. They formed a ring around the inmates before pushing them down onto their knees. A few of them hung their heads, some even shedding a tear. They had already figured out what was about to happen. Those that hadn't quickly caught up when they saw the security officers covering or deactivating their head cameras, then reaching for their sidearms. When they returned to the facility, Simon and the other officers would all give the same story. They collectively led a third of the site's D-Class to an area out of surveillance range, and executed them all with their handguns. At least, that's how they all remembered the incident. But what they thought they'd done didn't quite match what had actually happened. Naturally, the Foundation higher-ups quickly got wind of what happened, and of such a massive expenditure of their expendable D-Class resources. The incident forced the SCP Foundation to launch a full-blown investigation into the actions of Simon, the other security officers, and additional personnel on site. They quickly recognized the pattern of behavior. They had seen it before. They already knew not one of the guards had actually fired their weapons. In fact, none of them had been acting of their own free will. Simon and the others had no idea that the monthly termination procedure didn't exist in the Foundation's records and was actually the symptom of an SCP-2193 event. All those D-Class that had been rounded up and marched out into the middle of nowhere were still gone, though. 
not shot point blank like the officers thought, but the prisoners were still no longer alive either. Although he'd never remember it, when Simon had been stood amongst his fellow officers, one of the D-Class had begun floating upwards. Lifted off the ground by some invisible force, the convicted felon drifted about three meters in the air without warning. The prisoner was then launched up, practically fired towards the sky like a rocket, traveling into the upper atmosphere at several times the speed of sound. One by one, the members of D-Class all began experiencing the same thing, floating off the ground only to be catapulted up into the stratosphere with such speed and force that they vanished from view in seconds. Meanwhile, all Simon and the other security officers did was stand by and watch, keeping their head cams covered or switched off. The last of the D-Class prisoners stood in the clearing, the one that had asked Simon to be set free. He was still asking, begging to be helped down as his feet were hoisted up against his will, practically screaming for someone, anyone, to do something. His eyes locked with Simon's for a split second before he too was sent hurtling into the sky. Moving that high and that fast isn't something a human being is at all likely to survive. Now rid of the D-Class that they had led to their deaths, all the gathered security personnel looked up. It was night. Starlight cast across an inky canvas of dark sky, but Simon was fixated on the moon. They all were. None of them could take their eyes off it as it slowly appeared to blink, like a watchful eye hanging in the space above them. Not one of them would remember what they had seen or what they had truly done. No member of D-Class was a saint, it's true. They were murderers, criminals, and dangerous individuals. Maybe some of them were so bad that they did deserve to be used as test subjects, to die at the hands of anomalous entities. But then again, does anyone really deserve to go out like that? Little is known about the point of origin of SCP-2193. While it affects the documents stored within the Foundation's database, it does not function like a computer virus or artificial intelligence. Instead, SCP-2193-1 is an anomalous piece of information, or an info hazard, as SCPs like this are known. It has been known to infect digital files, specifically the special containment procedures for various entities, objects, and creatures that the Foundation has recorded in its archives. Even their most talented computer engineers and anomalous researchers cannot determine how this info hazard is able to accomplish this. It seems to infect files at random, without any repeating pattern in its timing or the type of SCP files it appears in. Upon infection, a file now containing SCP-2193-1 will include references to a monthly termination of D-Class personnel, making it as an essential process for keeping an anomaly secure. Anyone that reads this suffers from what is known as a mimetic effect. Essentially, they will believe what they have read and believe that they have always been aware of this information. On top of that, a person infected by SCP-2193-1 will accept it as true that the monthly termination is a legitimate and accepted practice within the SCP Foundation. They can't be convinced that killing hundreds of D-Class personnel is anything less than justified. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that uninfected personnel can easily explain to those who have been affected by SCP-2193-1 that the monthly termination isn't an official Foundation policy, but this info hazard has proven itself to be particularly infectious when spreading its mimetic influence. Any member of Foundation personnel not yet exposed to SCP-2193-1 can be easily convinced that the monthly termination is both morally acceptable and a Foundation-held procedure that is absolutely necessary for anomaly containment. If anyone that has read and therefore believes the monthly termination process, then they will display a lack of cognitive dissonance whenever someone attempts to present them with information that conflicts with SCP-2193-1. While no document within their internal database has a record of the monthly termination procedure, back in January of 1999, the Foundation was able to witness the process secondhand via one of its agents. During an SCP-2193 event, Agent Yusan's head camera was left uncovered, recording excerpts of the precise and perfectly choreographed execution of numerous D-Class personnel. Much like the event Simon was a part of, an unknown anomaly caused the Earth's moon to appear to blink. It is believed by some within the Foundation that this is the result of a form of eldritch entity, a being that demands a substantial human sacrifice every month. This being, as of yet, remains unidentified. Just as unclear is this anomaly's intentions, motives, or how it is able to affect, or perhaps use, the moon. Of course, the SCP Foundation has its own personnel stationed up there, 
However, during recorded instances of SCP-2193 events, their agents at Luna Area 32 have reported no unusual activity or abnormalities at the corresponding times. The running theory among some personnel is that the moon isn't this unidentified being's actual eye, but some kind of ocular device like a spyglass that allows it to observe the monthly termination. Whatever this being is, it apparently possesses an immense level of power. How exactly it is able to create SCP-2193-1 and infiltrate the Foundation's internal database with that info hazard is still unknown. As is the exact reason why it goes to such trouble, such incalculable lengths, seemingly just for the purpose of killing so many D-Class inmates. The immediate assumption, albeit admittedly a morbid and cynical one, held by most Foundation researchers studying SCP-2193, is that this entity needs this almost ritualistic monthly sacrifice in order to sustain itself. One idea suggests it could be a creature that opposes how the Foundation uses its D-Class personnel. Maybe it, just like Simon used to, questions the morality of convicts being used as expendable guinea pigs. And as such, it uses its eldritch levels of power to remove them from the Foundation's reach for good. Or perhaps despite its subterfuge, this being feeds on those who have wronged others, making D-Class personnel prime candidates. That would certainly explain why the monthly termination procedure causes security officers to only bring the Foundation's force of expendable convicts. And after all, there are benevolent SCPs out there, even friendly ones. So it stands to reason that this being could be trying to rid the world of people who are bad enough to be put into D-Class. But then again, this world is rarely so kind. SCP-2193-1 makes Foundation officers bring D-Classes out to where they can't be seen causing them to cover their head cameras and believe a phony story about execution by sidearm so nobody knows what really happens to them. It even hides the info hazard detailing the monthly termination procedures at random, moving it around to a new file whenever it's detected. Such great effort is taken by this entity to cover its tracks, which would suggest a far more nefarious goal. It is entirely possible that this being does all this simply to amuse itself, expending countless lives and Foundation resources purely for a sick, sadistic form of entertainment. With no way of knowing the entity's true intention, the SCP Foundation can only sit and vigilantly wait, an artificial intelligence surveying their database for the next instance of SCP-2193. Now go check out SCP-055 Anti-Meme Unknown and SCP-1025 Encyclopedia of Common Diseases for more insights into info hazards, scare-inducing secrets, and truths too terrifying to tell, but only if you're brave enough.